All right. Well, welcome everyone to Conversations Across the Pond, episode four with my brother, my good friend, my confident, my trusted guide, my advisor. Man, I don't know what you're not in my life, Richard. You've pretty much been everything, dude. A brother, <laughs> you've been somebody that's just been become so dear to me in just since last fall. And I feel like I've known you my whole life, you know, and I'm just excited to jump on episode four with you today. We have we're gonna have some fun again, as always uh in in our conversation and so good afternoon to those in europe land and and good morning to those that are here in the united states or pacific time haven't even woken up yet so welcome <laughs> Richard. welcome welcome everyone well thanks steve welcome to yourself i really appreciate your warm words there and yeah and it's the fourth edition it's the fourth series that we're making here and we're actually having great fun in creating these series every time we're having our conversations beforehand and 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 kind of brainstorming what you know what would be of interest for people, and then this is what we've come up with now is the art of feedback. So the feedback part about what happens when you get feedback, and this was also stimulated from what we talked about in one of the other sessions about uh, Phil Carroll, wasn't it? About his Pete Carroll. Fe- mm-hmm. feedback, Pete Carroll, sorry, with his feedback with his players in the NFL world and how feedback it is or can be misconceived into thinking ah it's this way no it's this way and how people perceive that is in that moment when they're receiving it and and where does it or how does it relate to what's happening to you as an individual and what what can be done about it and what what can you see about it i mean there's so many questions that we could spill out to everyone mm-hmm. but i think I'm going to let Steve just start us off here, rolling us off on the art of feedback. And then yeah. let's see how it unfolds. You got it. And you see this beautiful whiteboard, wonderful handwriting. No, just joking. Some of you might not oh, be yeah. able to read it, but that keeps us on track, by the way. I know for those visual learners out there. Um, and this conversation came up really as a as a aftermath of a lot of questions that Richard and I get asked out, in the, out, out with leaders, everyday leaders, whether you're owning companies or people running staff or management or people in life and marriage feedback and how that's how that's dealt with is a lot of the things I run into and it goes perfect in line with we started with engagement and culture right our first two episodes if you haven't listened to those make sure you go back and and that'll that'll kind of kind of bring us up to this point today and then all last a couple weeks ago we talked about heart versus head and I felt episode four with feedback is just a perfect trans transition into what we're talking about today as it goes perfectly kind of in sequence in sequence with with the development of our thinking and the development of how we're showing up development of our who we're being and becoming and you'll see with the shirt today the launch pad right this is the the when i was at kennedy space center my favorite place in florida that i've been to so far since moving here a year ago and i think about this often because i think about what type of feedback is necessary to get to the moon, to accomplish these great missions that take so much effort, toil, energy to get to where they're going to get to. And it takes feedback, constant feedback all the time to accomplish a big goal, a big mission, something that is greater than ourselves. Right. But today we'll look at it in the context of just everyday feedback. Right. And so, and so, as we go into this, one of the questions I have for you, Richard, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this at you, is you hear a lot about growth mindset, you know, some of the work that Carol Dweck's done out of Stanford, you know, and this idea that people are trying to push, you know, hey, we want to have a growth mindset culture. We want people to be open to learning and 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 welcoming uh, conversations that might get sticky, like crucial conversations. We want people to be able to know that that. Uh, that they can continue to progress and grow as an employee or a business owner. But yet what comes in every time is this feedback. You'll see that here. This idea of feedback is negative. Usually for most cases, why do you think that is Richard? Why do you think feedback meets the instant resistance to it? Well, you know, I mean, Carol's work has been really great and I had the book as well and I I read that several times and I think it really allows us to explore the possibilities there of that growth mindset. But it's it's about the beliefs we have. 
Mm. And yeah, okay, we, we're wanting the teams to have a growth mindset. We're wanting to be open. But if they've had periods of years of beliefs that feedback is negative and bang, 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 you know, the question is, in what ways can we change that? In what ways can they change that? But first of all, I think what is being able to see is that recognition that, you know, oh, I've been thinking of feedback as being negative all the time. Whereas others would see that actually feedback is actually a positive way. And it's the way we've been educated. Mm -hmm. It's the way we've seen things in our life and our social being with our friends, playing sports, working. You know, that experience when you first worked, how did you react to feedback? In what ways did you receive that feedback? Was you at the time feeling okay? Was you feeling uncomfortable? What was being, what thoughts, what mm. feelings were being brought up about it? That's the reflection that you need to look at. It's nice to read these books. And don't get me wrong, these books are great education of knowledge and wisdom. That's inside us as well. But you've got to do the work internally. Mm -hmm. We can talk about this. We can share. But you have to go with someone, a coach, mentor, whoever you feel is comfortable to listen to. It could be even a lamppost if you wish to. I know Michael Neal's talked about his lamppost experience. That in itself is saying something about the work has to be done inside. So I think the first part is, is do you see what that feedback is? Is it positive to you or is it a negative understanding, a belief about yourself? Yeah, that's a great, great place. And that's where actually a lot of our coaching, right? You and I, a lot of our conversations with clients that we serve or, or organizations that we work with come down, it comes down to the belief system, right? And this idea of a, where's our identity and our ego, our beliefs, the things that, the things that are underneath the iceberg that most people don't see or talk about typically is where we need to go in order to unravel, uh, unpack some of those things that come up, right? For instance, when I go to an organization, if I was to present this to a group, which I actually am next, next month, right out, out, out on the, on the West coast in California, and the first question I always pose, and I, this tells me how people receive feedback from the start, I would just say a question like, Richard, can I have a word with you in my office, please? This will be real quick. This won't take much time at all. What do you think the response from most people is going to be on that question? Well, I think they're going to say, what if I done wrong? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. What is it that, that you need to talk to me about? So they're already creating an expectation that they may have done something wrong. Yeah. So it's already as an instant response, right? That first knee jerk response is what did I do wrong? What now? Almost going down into this identity of, of, of must be something bad. I don't know yet though. I don't have the facts. I don't know what they're going to say to me. I don't know if it's, but my instant response was from a negative standpoint, right? And so right there, those indications of like, what's what's that piece within me that is responding and assuming that it's going to be something that's not helpful and beneficial and going to be a good thing. It's going to be a positive, uh, a positive uh, engagement, so to speak. And so interesting to notice that piece that comes up for us when we're looking at feedback as negative versus feedback as welcomed and necessary, right? You see Michael Jordan on my wall behind me. One of the reasons he's up there is because my dad painted it for me when I was 13. So it makes me think of just how brilliant my dad is and how wonderful he painted that for me when I was a teenager. And I have it up there because it reminds me of feedback is absolutely critical in order to get become great at anything to become to grow at anything talk about the growth mindset and it doesn't mean it's easy for feedback right as we're unpacking that today but how much it's necessary in order to get anywhere we can't launch can't get to the moon we can't get where we want to get to in in unless 
we look at exploring our beliefs, our identity, our ego, our values of where we put feedback into, where we get it from home, our spouse, our kids, whether we get it from our boss, our place at work, or just in the community at large, right? Yeah, and when you were talking about this, and I was wanting not to interrupt, but I also, Mm -hmm. what came up for me was the, when we're getting that feedback and then we're jumping into a negative mindset, are we are we really being present or are we jumping into the future? Mm. Now, when you say, can I take you into the office and we'll have a conversation, you will, uh, from what I'm seeing, from my understanding and my truth about what it is for me would be, I'm actually jumping into the future. Yeah. But if I actually just know I'm okay as who I am and I'm going to listen to Steve to see what he's actually saying, then you're staying present. Now, that's a distinction if you can understand and see that because it's not all, it's not easy to see if you're in present mm-hmm. moment or you're in the future moment or even in the past because we have all these conversations going on in our head and our eyes are giving us information. But what are we creating inside? What is the real – how how are we creating our reality? Mm-hmm. Are we actually creating it from fear? So that would mean we're possibly jumping into the future and having them expectations. Or we're actually coming from – we're using the word love or – being calm or just weighing it up and, and, and let's see what Steve is going to say to me because I don't know what's in mm-hmm. Steve's head and he certainly doesn't know what's in my head, but I've already created that conversation because he said, let's go into the office. You can imagine billions of thoughts are actually passing by when actually Steve says, can we just go into my office and have a conversation? Bing, 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 bing. It'd be like, wow, them doors are just opening up. That's massive. Like you said, being present means I'm not creating a a story or a narrative that doesn't exist. And I'm not jumping into my future and predicting and assuming. I am, it's almost like I'm sitting with listening ears, waiting to almost engage in the current present moment without any judgment to that moment yeah and and don't get us wrong folks Mm -hmm. we all do it oh yeah myself steve does it we all jump into that area that's why i invest in coaching more for myself than my clients will ever do (laughs) because i need it all the more well i think we all do we're investing things that are it's not about the game it's about who we're becoming yeah, so and, and 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 you can take that whatever way you wish to, everyone. It, it, the fact is, we learn more about ourselves if we jump in. Mm-hmm. If we just put our toes into the water, we ain't gonna swim. You got to go in there. You got to go into the water. You got to swim. You got to move. You got to see how that experience is. Yeah, and it may not be feeling comfortable. But once you practice and get to understand the movements and understand your knowledge comes through, your wisdom comes through how to swim, then you'll feel a difference. You'll feel alive. You'll feel as though you can go across that pool or that lake or whatever or swim along into the ocean. The ocean behind you in the picture there, right? Across the channel. With great white sharks all around you, right? You'll make it through. That was a perfect segue to the second point, which is feedback is learning, Yeah, right? We had feedback as yeah. negative looking at where beliefs are, how we can become more present and get to that place. And, and of course, as we're talking today, there's a lot more as we work with clients and organizations to unpack this more. Today is kind of bringing out the thought or the, the principle or, uh, or just be able to, to, to drop a few, a few seeds in your garden today that need to be watered and nurtured and fertilized, right? But this is kind of giving you just an insight into that. But you mentioned a cool word, learning, practice and advancement, right? Mm -hmm. Love that word I learned from Stephen McGee 
years ago and he talked about everything is for forward advancement. Everything. I mean, like negative setbacks, failure, frustration, advancement. Oh, how is that? How is that possibly advancement? I just failed. Notice when we use the word failed, I'd love to hear your take on this. It's I heard this from a business owner the other day. He was frustrated with his not making his 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 uh his wonderful, just one of the best leaders I know on the planet, but yet the frustration of not hitting a monthly goal or a quarterly goal, and he was tar starting to internalize it, beliefs, and starting to internalize it into who he's being. And I just asked him, isn't your goal made up anyway? And it shifted something there in the moment. If I make up my goal, can I not remake up a new goal or can I not shift and recreate and reinvent how I even look at that goal? If I'm the one that made it up, is it really a failure? Or is it feedback for learning? Well, I think we've been educated in, in such a degree. And it, I mean, don't get me wrong, education is a wonderful thing. and But the way we are taught to understand failure, oh, you failed. Your parents say, well, you failed at that exam. You should do better. Or you failed at passing your driving test. You should learn to read more, or to, to practice more. Instead of what I'm trying to say is, is being that, be the mirror for them. Because what what with that business guy where you pointed out to him, you know, well, you can't change that goal. You know, you don't have to keep striving to get a hundred K per month. If as an example, or you need to have 20 calls that you've been successful with. It's understanding that, you know, you're going to have some days where you're going to be kind of a little bit off. Could be for whatever reason. But that's in your world. And the world keeps turning around and around and around. And it keeps moving. Trees are growing. Trees are deciding to, to, to die. There's, nature still moves. Still creates stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and its goal, it's just to, to live in the moment. When the sun's out, it's there. It takes in the nice sun. When the sun goes in, okay, it cuddles up. That's it. Its goal is maybe to live each day as it is and, and, and to enjoy it. Because, mm. you know, we don't know when our next day is. Really don't know. And I think having the fun of, okay, well, you know, what was wrong with them goals? Okay, well, possibly I achieved too much. Possibly I was not having fun and reaching them goals. And maybe, you know, the goals with I set the bar too high. There's then possibilities that you can set. You may be setting the goals too high. And maybe it's kind of saying, okay, well, you know, I'm okay to take a few clients or a few orders that are less than normal because I've set my high. You know, I want $20,000 of orders. But, you know, maybe offering one or two orders at $5,000 mm -hmm. instead. But you actually are, are still serving the person in the same way. It's where who you're becoming. It, it, it's that essence of, I'm okay. Things will sort itself out instead of trying to control it. I want to get that amount of, no, you can't control that. You can't yeah. control it. That's it. You can't control the outcome. I love what you're saying there. It's good. Re it's a good indication too, if I'm ready to scale, continue where I'm at and scale up. It's just, it's the resistance I meet with change and challenge, right? The more I expand into the unknown, the uncertain, the more it's going to stretch me. I can stay the course and go, okay, I know what this, this is, this is okay. It's perfectly normal. Carry on. And or it could also be a representation of maybe I outstretched where I really want to be. Why am I doing this to begin with? Why, you know, what's the whole point of doing this? Sometimes it gives you an example to, or a good, a good representation to scale back, maybe downsize, maybe get back to who you're being and becoming when you've 
gotten so far out out in left field, kind of bringing you back to center again too could be, right? So, but the feedback is awesome because it's a new awareness, right? As I'm learning and practicing, I love you said having fun, right? It's making it a game in the sense well, of yeah. making it a game in the sense of life is about a testing experiment, experiment, right? Like Thomas Edison, he says, I have not failed. You can't see it here, but I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. What? Not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That just means I show up to practice. And it's not like definition of insanity. I do the same thing over and over and expecting different results. This is every time I show up on practice, I'm learning something new about myself called feedback. And what do I do with that feedback? I can grow well, into it or I can run from it, but it's given me a signal that's imperative for advancement, for growth, for for maturity, for wisdom. And I think you're right, especially with business owners or teams that have to reinvent themselves. We're calling it reinventing yourselves. You know, when you have a company that fails, it, it fails. There you go. We're using that word fails, but it, it's not a failure. We may think it is, but the company, okay, it, it just didn't work out as it should have been doing at the time. It doesn't stop you from, as you say, reinventing it, looking at it a different way. The experiences that you've had when the business wasn't going so well is going to put you in a further stance further down the line to have a better company or a better team than you had before. So, you know, these experiences, as we say, they don't, we, we title them as failure, but it, it's such a, mm. it can be such a negative. It's like a stamp, uh, failed, boom, on the piece of paper, <laughs> failed on top of your head, you know? Come on. Failure. It, yeah. Failure. Should I walk, wear a shirt? I should just say failure. Yeah, but it's not the case. But we are programmed to, to, to think in that way. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and and just like me recognizing that's not a failure in business, it's it just as it is. It's just what has happened. Yeah. And to look at it and say, wow, okay, this is what moved around this, what didn't move, this what did shake, this didn't shake. And then yeah, okay, let's let's start again. Let's create mm. something different or create something with a different approach or a different understanding. If we go about doing the same thing and, and 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 creating the same thing, is it really going to work? Is it really yeah. going to be what we are wanting? And and the question right. is, what do we want? Knowing that the feedback is there, what is it that we want? That's it, and that's that's key right there. Is what do we want? Because a book like outliers you know when malcolm godwell talks about ten thousand hours can sound sound good in theory oh i just practice i just show up i do the work and then i'll get there except for what's missed is who i'm being who i'm becoming what do i want am i advancing do i see my advancement every step of the way as i'm practicing or someday i'll get there i'm putting in the batting practice I'll get there one day, right? So future or present. I love what you're saying. I'm back to presence. Getting better right now. Oh, a little bit better. I just, but added, I, also, I just added to growth right this moment versus waiting for growth to happen in some mysterious future land, right? Well, yeah. And, and uh, what I, how that relate, when you were saying that, how that related to me was, um, I used to play sport and well, I played sport all my life, but in the UK, I used to play cricket mm -hmm. and I wanted to bowl. I wanted to know how to bowl the ball at the batsman. I had to relearn again. But I also actually, what I saw was I kind of went into the future of saying, okay, the season starts in April. I'm practicing now in October, November going into the future and looking back what do i want to see what have, what have i where have i seen the progression and i saw the progression that eventually i was just hitting one stick you have three sticks i was hitting the middle stick all the time 
bang, bang, bang. I was practicing on that. And mm. I had actually created that, knowing that that's what I wanted to be, be able to do. So when actually when I was playing in these matches, I was just rolling up and I was just going for the middle stick, middle stick, middle stick all the time. And that made a difference in my mindset because I'd actually gone there. Instead of going, where want to go? Where do I want to go? No, I'm already there. I've gone six months in advance. Okay, let's look back and see what I want to create from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if there's feedback along the way, that's great. And if there's practice and advancement on the way, that's great. And my belief system had changed. Instead of thinking, well, you know, I'm going to bow, I'm going to practice, and we'll see what happens. No, I, I got that energy. I got that fun. And I got that understanding that mm. well, let's look at it in six months' time. I've got that season starting, and I'd like to be, whoa, this is what's happening. Oh, I can see that when I get to the season, I'm ready to bow and I'm ready to play. Mm-hmm. You can see the progression. Yeah. You can see the progression. And I love what you said there. In order to see the progression, you're able to highlight the, the the gains. You're able to celebrate the wins. You're able to see those key moments versus rushing into your future or someday or looking at gaps all yeah. the time. Or I hope to get there. A lot of high performers, they struggle with yeah. this perfectionist mindset. Yeah. Struggle with this, right? I haven't gotten there yet. Someday. Different from mastery. Mastery, right? It's I'm better. I can, like you said, with cricket. I'm better every step I take out there yeah. of action, of doing yeah. in the sense of what I launch into the world. I'm getting better every single step. Am I where I want to be? No, because our vision continues to expand as we expand. Right? We've never reached our vision because it continues to grow too. It continues. It continues. And it leads me to the third one, which is relationship, right? We talked about this in the, and this is a cool continuation when we think about engagement and culture and heart. When I'm growing and who I am, I'm present. I'm growing in my ability to have fun, to see the progress, to see the gains as I practice. And this part of curiosity, we've talked a lot about this. We're going to keep coming back to it again because it's at the center heartbeat of always having a beginner's mindset for learning listening, understanding is this idea of now if I see feedback always from a curious mind, right? What is, what is the opposite would be when my nine-year-old says, daddy, I know that. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, I can't, uh, you know, it's almost like, ah, nails on a chalkboard or somebody just cuss at me. Right. Because usually when I say, I know that I now shut down, talk about fixed mindset. I've shut down my openness to now receiving. And so when I work through this and I go, feedback is, I'm excited. Please tell, tell me, teach me, show me. It's like, but you've been doing this for your whole life. Yeah, I don't know. You ever hear from people, you and I know from our great mentors, and they're always like, you know, Steve, the more I learn, the less I know. And I go, I thought you knew more than anyone else. So what do I know then? <laughs> right? Well, it's actually saying yes, yes, yes to everything. Uh-huh. Because, That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. People think, yeah, well, you should know this. Really? And you know about what? Mm-hmm. Because I don't know about this. We were all constantly learning about what it is to be a great team player or a great coach or a great a great leader or a great person as a as a partner, as a friend, as a lover. It's it's all about learning about ourselves so that mm. we can enjoy it because yeah. we do live on this earth a short time that's it that's why as you said that life is precious it is short it is moment by moment playbook right and curiosity is a superpower that we all have we just forget about it because we rush into our future and anxiety dwelling on our past depressed and we have this beautiful thing called curiosity that kids show us. My two-year-old, the garbage man's coming down the road. He's waving. I took a picture. <laughs> he made the garbage man's day. He's like, the garbage man's like, oh, this is just kind of a low paid, low, you know, I don't get, I don't, I don't get uh, 
you know, I don't get accolades. This is just, I have to deal with people's crap for a living. And the garbage man just smiled. My son's like, <laughs> and he just waved. I go, see, you made that guy stay right there. My five-year-old, he waves at everyone and says hi to everyone down the street. And I go, man, Caleb, you're like blasting it to the rooftops. I go, there's a certain curiosity that kids teach us. And somewhere along the line, we lose that because we're stuck in the narrative or we're living into the future and kids are the best at being in the moment and everything is exciting everything is interesting everything is an opportunity to receive yeah yeah because when we receive we're giving and giving is receiving it's the same thing yeah we actually that when your son's waving at that guy he your son is receiving an appreciation that he's mm -hmm. acknowledging someone he doesn't know who the dustman man is he just sees a guy in a truck he like maybe your son likes the big truck maybe he likes the the rubbish who knows yeah. and and he's just appreciating in that moment that person boy driving my son loved tractors whatever reason my son loved tractors <laughs> And eventually I found someone who could, he could sit on a tractor and he was just, his face was just like, oh. mm. he beamed. He just thought it was wonderful to be in a tractor. Isn't that something when you're attracting, you're learning. And when you're learning, confidence grows. Notice up here, we were dealing with ego, identity, limitations. Who am I? I'm not good enough yet. But when we're curious, like a child, the childlikeness, not childish. Oh, we can be that too. I certainly have those moments. But the confidence that's built and we're showing up curious, what comes from that is a confidence to step forward more and more and more into whatever it is that we're dealing with, whether it's work, home, and anything in between, our confidence level goes. We get more courage grows. Our ability to say, why not? Let's try it. Let's test it, right? And we're, that grows. This confidence in who we are, being and becoming grows as we're, this is why I call it, it's a relationship, relationship with ourselves and others, constant feedback. I love how, uh, you know, we are great, you know, great mentors that we, me and you follow like Steve Harrison and Steve Chandler and Gary Mahler and Steve McGee and, 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 and Rich Habits and all these great people that me and you get a chance to just learn and, and absorb from. It's always, everyone is my teacher. I'm like, oh, you mean everyone? everyone if i allow that take place because i'm curious and then now i have confidence because and I, you're great at this richard you're one of the best i've seen at absorbing from everyone something to learn and the confidence grows as you're learning with curiosity because then the collaboration piece comes into play right the part where we're, we call in coaching agreements in the counseling world, they, they call it more on the boundaries, right, as a counselor. Mm -hmm. But on the coaching side, we call it more of coming into this place of agreement, coming to this place of, of, like you said, I receive and I give. This place of relationship, I can now collaborate with others when I see feedback as a necessary means to growing, I can now always step into collaborative relationship. So as we share that, you know, I wanted to kind of, as I pitched that to you, Richard, is that idea of like, when you see the struggles with collaboration, I know you, <laughs> you see plenty of it in your world, I know. And people are trying to, you know, compromise or there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of negotiations that don't go well because there's mm. maybe some, some, some stonewalling or some avoidance coming in or, or maybe there's competitiveness, right? Oh, I'm better than you, better than me. There's win, lose, lose, win. What we're talking about is a win-win every single time when we're going through this part of feedback as growth, or, you know, this growth mindset that we're talking about from a way where we know who we are and we know what we're about. Now we can actually, now we can actually shake the hand of the person across from us differently. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's appreciating that other person opposite of us and, and, and acknowledging for who they are being, mm. being, uh, yeah, th th that's an expansion. But what I'm saying is you and I, we've explored our relationship 
and you know we're constantly co having calls and, and ideas and we're sharing things because we, we're getting that that energy that understanding and it's it's a mirror it's literally mm -hmm. a mirror of who we are and you know i remember t uh, talking to one lad at the time and he was saying you know can i have a conversation said, yeah i'm listening <laughs> you know, and he was blah, 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 talking, etc. I said, okay, what did he want to say? And he went, oh, yeah, I want to say that. Okay. Do you know you're actually talking to yourself? Because all I'm doing is listening. And all I'm doing is bouncing back certain questions to you. And then you're responding. And actually, you've done all the work yourself because it was already there. Call it collaboration, call it relationship, call it whatever. We can play with these words. Confidence, yeah. it, confidence for me is like the 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 hidden uh, uh, bad guy with his cloak on inside. <laughs> you going, ha ha ha! I'm here, but yeah. it's true. Mm -hmm. Conf what is really confidence? Because we, we, what is it? Because everyone will have a different interpretation about it. Everyone will have a different interpretation about relationships. Yeah, I mean, I mean really. Everything boils down to a relationship. That's How it. you interact with someone That's from it. your service uh, in the bake in your for your donuts or your son. He's creating a relationship with the dustbin guy by waving. He doesn't know how else to communicate with the guy. He sees him in a big truck and he's like this, driving around. How's your son going to create that relationship? Puts his hand up and waves and says, hello. There you go. There you go. And that's why relationships is the hardest thing that we'll ever do. And the best thing that we'll ever do because of this word feedback in between how we interpret it, how we see it, how do we work through it? And I love where the confidence part is. You said that for me, it's like, I can choke na naked and unashamed and, that Brene Brown vulnerability, right, comes up where it's like, I can be myself, whether it looks like courage, whether it looks like taking action, whether it looks like shaking hand, doesn't matter. It's something of forward advancement. It's something that I'm moving forward instead of holding back, hesitating, resisting, letting fear grab the best of me and seeing feedback as an absolute joy of welcome. Takes work though. You and I, we work on this so hard. And this is why we're bringing it up today, because a lot of clients that we work with, those that are listen to this, it, it's it's a constant. It, you know, it, it's it's a constant. That's why we show up to practice. That's why sports is always good metaphor. It's like I'm I'm waking up, showing to practice to get better. It's a it's a real intentional way of being, right? A real real intentional way of of looking at feedback and welcoming something that somebody might feel like is a slap in the face and we look at it and go wow that's the best thing that anybody's ever told me it's like oh but that took growth to get to that place where it's like even the hardest critics i can welcome that because if i don't make it about me and a story about my identity there's no end to how much i can learn now yeah yeah and and I, I can look at it another way. You know, the feedback that I'm getting as well from someone actually is telling me more about them than a person. Mm. What's going on in their understanding about what has been said or been done, if be it in work, be it in sport, because we don't know, we're not in their heads of of what's going on and then thoughts what's really passing by how why did they think what were they thinking about why would they want why did they want to give us feedback now they maybe they need to give feedback because their management's told them that you need to tell these people that we need to be moving forward etc cetera, etc cetera. so you've got to give them feedback but really is that the case maybe more listening to your team first and then seeing if feedback is required or not which is a big piece of it, right? We talked about it last time with head versus heart, like a heart is depositing of how we're showing up, engagement and culture. I'm depositing into a relationship early and often enough to when I do give feedback, it's coming with a welcome because I know somebody is, 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 is edifying, is supporting, is building me up, it sees the good in me, 
chooses to, wants to see me win in my marriage and my life and my kids with my work. So they see feedback as, wow, this person must be speaking from the uh, heart. Yeah. Not from the, what did I do wrong now? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, right? And, yeah. and and even though we talk about today, it kind of scratches the the surface of it, but really it's kind of unpacking what books like Growth Mindset, great, but they don't get there. Outliers, it's a great book, but it doesn't get there. A lot of these books are are wonderful as far as uh, giving us, um, you know, a starting principles or a thought, but we're unpacking the behind the the human being factor in it and and and, and the and the parts that take place in our thinking and our belief systems and who we are. And that's the exciting piece of what what me and Richard get to do every day. It's I think it's like it's like the best I call it the best show on earth. I show up at popcorn and go, wow, that person's just like me. Huh. We get to work through this thing called feedback together and, and it can be such a beautiful picture like relationships or it can be the worst thing that's ever happened in my life like a nightmare and it's it's how i step into it though right it's how i step into it and 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 hopefully from today though kind of planted some of those seeds in your garden that need to be watered and fertilized and still there's going to be work to be done there but hopefully from today though you there's there's some elements that you picked up on from listening to richard and and hopefully I added some value too to your day. <laughs> always Certainly do. Richard. Oh, Richard always adds it to me. You always add it to me as well, Steve. It's it's you know, that that's the thing. It's it's not a an we could say it's an acknowledgement, but it's appreciation of what Steve offers and, and the way he 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 works on these podcasts with me and, and the way he comes up with these ideas. We brainstorm ideas and it's that appreciation that I like. And that's the friendship that we're creating. And and that's part of everything. It's it's about give and take and and sharing what is there, in the moment, folks. There's nothing more. Mm. There's nothing made up here. We do our planning, we do our preparation, but these talks are just off the cuff. We come from uh, an open heart, not even a structured sentence. It's just what is being brought up to us to say in the moment. Mm. And this is the power that you can get yourselves by realizing how great you are as individuals and your team as well, how great your team is, because by appreciating them, you're giving them feedback. That's and it. they're giving you feedback. So, right. And like you said, as we close today, that idea of feedback is relationship and relationship is conversations, right? We talk about conversations across the pond can't build a relationship without conversations and conversations mm -hmm. comes from this this ability to be curious to be open-minded to be looking forward to to have fun to be in the moment to see the good in myself and others to welcome anything and all things that come between giving and receiving that is the heart of feedback I can't say anything more than that, Steve. You've just yeah. said a, a lovely conclusion there. Listen, everyone, we hope you've enjoyed this little podcast here on the feedback. As we say, it's just touching the surface. There's a lot more further down in the iceberg that we'd uh, love to cover with you. Don't forget to reach out to both of us if you want to have a conversation or you just want to have a bit more information about what we're doing. We look forward to hearing from you. So everyone take care. And thank you, Steve. And, You're welcome. Uh, look forward to hearing from you all again. Take care. All bye right. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye, bye Richard. Bye.